Shiz. Shiz. Very nice today. It's not humid. That's good. It's not even warm or hot. Well, the sun is blocked by the clouds right now. Huh, gotta get used to these new shoes. I'm wearing my new kicks today. And it feels funny on the uh, on the pedals here. These shoes I have on now has extra tread on it. So it's kind of weird. It's like a thicker shoe. And it's uh, giving me a hard time on the uh, accelerator and the brakes. You make the area better. Nice, nice looking. Look at that piece of ours. Before YouTube flags me. No, YouTube don't flag me. No. No. I got my five shots, one day, Americano, with three shots of peppermint, two bags of Splenda. So this is my five shots of Americano with three shots of peppermint and Splenda. I have to go to my client again, the one I went to yesterday. I got to go there again to um, look at some things that they emailed me about. So about they're having a couple of issues, not major issues, but a couple of issues. I took care of a few of them yesterday, but evidently they're still having a, uh, some issues with Microsoft Dynamics CRM. And so I'm uh, working with them on that. Go there, find out what the issue is, and try to solve it. If I can't solve it there, what I might have to do is remote session. Because I, I really don't know if it's a computer issue, because when I fix the issue, it worked for me on my computer. Um, but it didn't. But it's still not working for them on their computer. So I'm wondering if it's a computer issue, or is it a user provisioning issue that I need to contact Microsoft about, or is it a, something wrong with CRM? And um, you know, and, and their user um, permissions or access. I mean, I have to you know look at a bunch of things, but we'll see. I mean, and I may have to call upon help from the CRM community to say, hey, have you guys experienced this before? You know, what did you guys do to fix it? And the community is pretty awesome. Um, Microsoft has a forum. It's, it's actually a forum, but they call it a community. They just go on there and say, hey, I'm experiencing this issue and this is what's happening. And either a Microsoft personnel will contact you on the forums, you know, or someone else who is a part of the forum, like usually like a administrator of CRM, will contact you and say, yeah, I have that same issue. And they will share their experiences and how they fixed it. And it gives me some insight on what I can do to fix issues on my customers. On my clients in. So it, I think it's a, a good thing. I'll just use these five office as a community, community like that. And 
if it's a major issue, usually a Microsoft personnel and technical support will literally kind of say, you know, this is a bigger issue than what can be handled in the forums. We're going to create a ticket for you and see if we can get this taken care of as soon as possible. That's cool. I like that. Oh, and another thing I got to do today after I work with my client is I have an interview at 3.30. And it's for Microsoft Exchange and Active Directory support. And I'll be working with Active Directory mostly. And um, so they're asking me a bunch of questions if I know about Active Directory, what things I know. And I, I know I know a lot of things, but I'm not I'm not gonna say I'm an expert with Active Directory, but I do know a lot. And so that's it's a good thing that they're hiring for this position because this will give me the opportunity to hire to learn even more about Active Directory. And this can also help me with my certifications as well. So I can become a Microsoft certified um, technician. Which is what I want. I want my MCP. It's what it is, you know. Uh, the job market is, is what it is, and I just got laid off, so I got to keep the bills paid. So I got to do what I got to do. I got to do what I got to do. I got to do what I got to do. That's eight words. Uh, that would have been a cool little uh, name of a show. Right, but it's eight letters long, and all my titles are seven words long. It's exactly seven words long for every show, so I can't really use that. I got to do. Well, maybe I could just say, got to do, or maybe got to do what I got to do. Got to do what I got to do. That's going to be the name of the show. T T D. That's the name of the show. Oh, got it. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it, and I love it, and I love it. Love it. All right, guys, you're wasting my gas here. So I got to be at this interview at 3.30. Now, my idea, which is something I kind of want to do, is to catch the train there because the job interview is in downtown Austin and parking in downtown Austin is a yacht. So what I want to do is drive to the Howard station where is where I was for the uh, the moving infrastructure show. I want to go to the Howard station and uh, catch the train it leaves at 2.32. So if I get back on time, I can catch that train, catch it, catch it uh, going downtown. I'm there. Then catch the train back and um, drive home. And that will save me on gas and a bunch of other stuff. Ticket. So it seemed like I made it. get to the other side you can't to the back of the train you have to there's no entry emergency access only or emergency use only you can use this I mean I can go through it now but I'm sure that it will probably stop the train and the conductor will probably stop the train and find out what's going on that's okay I'm gonna make sure I only talk to the back of your head
Oh, a bike rack. Look at that. That's going to be nice. There's some development going on here to help improve the metro rail. Probably some homes or such. I gotta look that up. Sorry. Now I know these are brand new apartments, and this is part of the metro project to help. And they got the car to go right there. That's where you can rent a car to travel within the city. Metro power, local travel only. You get off the metro, get in the car, and go to your local destination. I don't have uh, his permission to use the space, so I got this camera down. And that piece of artwork is part of the art program to help revitalize the area and make the area better. Nice, nice looking. A lot of cities are doing that. It's using art at rail stations to help increase ridership. There we go. Much better. <laughs> All right. A lot of interesting stuff here. Texas, uh, they love those some uh, horns, I'm telling you. Say again? Oh, I really don't know. I, I'm not that familiar with Austin. Not familiar with Austin? Nah. I moved here a year ago, but haven't really walked around. It's like, that's my first time. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Look at that. That is a gorgeous building. This is the famous 6th Street in Austin, Texas, which is very famous uh, for a crap load of live bands. In fact, that's what Austin is known for. It's for live bands. So, a great place to see. If you love music, Nashville is the music center of the world. Here is the live music center of the world. So, this is a great place to hang out. This is where most of the action happens. A lot of bars, a lot of clubs. Well, not really clubs, but live performances. And each one of these places, every night almost, have somebody performing live.
really interesting stuff. A lot of fun. Beautiful. Ooh, I'm going to have to sell cigarettes in there. I ran out of cigarettes. You can buy one. Hey, how you doing, sir? Oh, yeah. Cigarettes it is. I'm telling you, Austin, Texas is different from the rest of Texas. It really is. It's a different culture in a small city as compared to, like, Dallas, San Antonio, and Houston. You know, it's, it's more diverse. It's a lot friendlier <laughs> here in Austin. And when they say keep it weird, they do keep it weird here. It's really an interesting city. All right, my destination is coming up. One thing I like about this city, too, is on every sidewalk in downtown, you have these bike racks. So they're trying to make it a bike-friendly city. A lot of cities are doing that, though. L.A.'s doing it, and they should do it in every city there is. So people, this is a bike-friendly city, and people ride their bikes here. They're trying to get people out of their cars. And that's where I got to go. She said to get on the tallest building, so that's what I'm about to do right now. All right, she's telling me that it's got 15% power. Ooh, look at this. Is no one sitting down here? Okay. Look at that piece of art. That is gorgeous. All right, you tell me I'm going to sign out now because I got to look at the address and their suite number. So, peace out. Okay, suite 910. Right now, I'm waiting in, in the lobby area. Uh, no one's here, but I hear people talking in the background. But I just saw this map that was really cool. It was um, adopted in March of 1939. And this is the district before. And notice there are no freeways because freeways at the time haven't been, you know, implemented. They didn't have freeways. They only had railroads. So that's how people traveled back in those days. It's mostly railroads. And there's the uh, zoning of the city, so they have the different zones. And there's the uh, capital of Texas, running straight down, Congress. So this is how the city uh, got developed. Very interesting. This other map um, shows Guadalupe County as depicted in, okay, I think my low batteries is freezing. There we go, okay. Sorry about that, YouTube. My battery is low, so I think it's tripping right now. But this is, a, this is the district map of Guadalupe County. Pretty interesting. You know, this was hand-drawn, you can tell. It wasn't computer. They didn't have all that stuff back in 1869. And it was all done by sight. They didn't have satellite photos or anything like that. So this is quite interesting. I just had to show you guys that. Oh, and just kind of real quick. This is what Austin looked like back in 1910. So very interesting. And there's the Capitol right there. Very beautiful building. It kind of reminds me of Pasadena City Hall. Uh, if anybody's been to Pasadena, in the middle of the city, there's this huge old structure that looks just like that. Very nice. So um, let me sign out before someone sees me doing this. <laughs> Instead of me vlogging, I should have been paying attention. So I guess I got to pick up the phone. That's a nice looking building right there. And that really thin one, it looks like an apartment building. That one right there. That one up there too.
Yeah, the interview went well, and I am um, on my way back to Power Station from downtown, and it's going to be fun. There is a crew here doing something, so um, my battery is really low, so I'll do as much video taking as possible, but I may not be able to capture it. You know, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself real quick, just so that you guys know who I am exactly. Um, I haven't really did that. If you go to my website, there is a uh, description or a bio of me, but on YouTube, there isn't. So, in fact, you know, no, you know what? I'm going to say that for a video of its own. Yeah, it's going to be a specific video that's going to talk about, you know, just about myself and also about my wife, um, but I will say this, my wife, uh, I told her I was going to do this, she does not want to be in the video, and she feels that the house is not suitable for video either. Alright, hold on a second, you two, I'm going to clean out this car just a little bit real quick. I think it was the first video where I made the shot, it was very hard to see because it was so dark. You know, I wonder, I would like to see some videos that were, that are shot in dark, in, uh, in the dark, so that I know how it looked, because even though it may not be to my satisfaction, you know, I at least like to know how dark the videos will look when I'm taking uh, photographs. Now that Nikon, I know it has a few features where I can bump up some light, but those um, contour cameras and GoPro, they only show videos that are shot during the day or with a lot of light because they're sports cameras. And most of the time, it's done during the day. But if I shoot stuff at night, like shooting forward of my um, windshield, I want to know what the picture quality would be like. Uh, would, would it still be able to capture some type of light where it's not completely dark? This camera here does okay. It's low resolution. It's blurry, but... It's enough to where if I'm talking, you can hear me, and it's, I believe it's good enough, but I don't think it's perfect. Um, I'd like to know if there's a way I can get a, uh, some type of mount, you know, to, I don't know if you can see that, but I want to put a mount, like, right here, or, I don't know, um, or maybe put a mount, like, right here behind the rear view mirror or in front of, if you look at it from the point of view of the, cam uh, the car, if I can put a mount right here facing forward, all i got to do is just, you know, take the camera and lock it in place, face forward. And then I can unlock the camera and take it with me in wherever I go. The only thing I don't like is that the camera battery life, according to the website, is two and a half hours. I really don't think that's long enough. Don't forget to like this video. Well, you know, you got to do what you got to do.